Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to set up the project we will be using for the rest of this series. Ideally, we could do the series without any additional project setup, but then we wouldn't be able to fully understand and appreciate what React query brings to the table. So I want to take a few minutes to set up the project and from the next video, I guarantee it will all be about React query. So what does this project setup entail? Step one, we will create a new React project using create React app. Step two, we will set up an API endpoint that serves mock data for use in our application. Step three, we will set up React router and a few routes in the application, which is essential for understanding some of the features. Finally, we will learn how to fetch data the traditional way using use effect and use state, which will help us compare data fetching with React query in the next video. Now I understand that you might be eager to just get started with React query without these initial steps. For that, you can visit my React query tutorials, GitHub repo and clone it. The React query started project contains all the setup we are going to do in this video. So pause the video for a minute, make sure you have the starter template and resume to follow along. Now step one is to create a new React app using create React app. Since the process is time consuming, I have already created the project. For you, in the terminal, run the command npx create react app react query demo. This will create a project similar to mine. A pretty simple step. For step two, we need to set up an API endpoint that serves mock data. We are dealing with data fetching in the series and we need to have mock data that can be used. For that, we're going to make use of JSON server. And the reason is that JSON server not only supports get requests, but also post requests, which we need as part of this series. The setup is really simple, so let me show you how. In the terminal, run the command yarn add json-server or npm install json-server. Next, in the project root, create a new file called db.json. Within the file, we need to add JSON data that we want to serve as API data. I am going to copy paste an array of three superheroes. Each hero has an ID, a name, and an alter ego. We have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and their alter egos. To serve this data on an endpoint, we need to add an npm script. So in package.json, under scripts, I'm going to add a new script called serve.json and the command to execute would be json server dash dash watch db.json on port 4000. If we now run yarn serve json in the terminal, head to the browser and navigate to localhost port 4000 slash superheroes We should see our API endpoint working. It returns an array of three heroes. And this data is sufficient to get started with React Query. All right, let's now move on to step three. Set up React Router and a few routes in the application. Back in VS Code, in a new terminal, run the command yarn add react-router-dom. To begin with, 
we need three routes in our application. So let's create the corresponding components. In the source folder, create a new folder called components. And within this folder, we create three files. Home.page.js, which is the home page. Superheroes.page.js, which is a component where we fetch data the traditional way using use effect and use state. And finally, our queue superheroes.page.js, where we will fetch data using React query in the upcoming videos. Now the file name convention is something I have picked to help organize code. A page is simply a component that will be a route in our application. Now within each file, I'm going to define and export a simple component. Home page, home page, and we don't need React import since we are working with version 17. Similarly, superheroes page, And finally, our Q superheroes page. Once we have the code for the three components, I'm going to replace the entire content of app.js to create a top navigation and a content for each route. I have copy pasted the code and you can refer to the GitHub repo for the same. You can see that we have three links to each of the pages that we have created and the component to be rendered for each of the three routes. So the home link will lead us to home page. The traditional superheroes link will lead us to superheroes page and RQ superheroes link will lead us to RQ superheroes page. Finally, in app.css, I'm going to add some styles to the navigation bar. The code again is available on my GitHub repo. If you now start our application with yarn start, we should have a very basic app layout. A navbar at the top and below the navbar, the component corresponding to each link. Home traditional superheroes and RQ superheroes. So that is our step three. For our fourth and final step, I want to quickly go through how we traditionally fetch data in a React application. Now I like to use Axios for data fetching. So I'm going to install it. New terminal, yarn add Axios. Next, in the superheroes page, I'm going to copy paste the code for fetching and displaying the list of superheroes. Let me walk you through the code. At the top, we have imported use state and use effect hooks. Within the component, we are maintaining two states, an ease loading variable that indicates whether the data is being loaded and a data variable which holds the data fetched from the API. In the use effect hook, using Axios, we make a get request to our JSON server API endpoint. This returns a promise, so inside then block, we set data equal to response.data and is loading to false. This is the traditional way of fetching data. For the JSX, we use the is loading flag to display a loading text. And if the data has loaded, we map over it, displaying just the hero name. If we head back to the browser and click on traditional superheroes link, we see the loading text 
and then a list of superheroes. Our data fetching works as expected. And that completes our project setup. We have created a React app, set up an API endpoint using JSON server, added routes to the app using React Router, and briefly went over how data fetching is done traditionally in a React application. Nothing specific to React Query, so let's fix that in the next video. Let's learn how to set up React Query in our application and make a GET request using the same library. I'll see you in the next one.